On this episode of Multiple Brokerage Personalities, we're actually going to cover three accounts. We're going to talk about Public, Robinhood, and SoFi, and we're going to go in order of which I started. So the first one was actually Robinhood. Robinhood was started probably right after SNL with Elon Musk, and that's when I started to buy Dogecoin. I bought all the dips all the way down. <laughs> I'm still in the negative on it, but it was a valuable lesson for me. Robinhood was the account that I chose to start because my office manager was the one that was using Robinhood, was buying Doge on there, and kept telling me about it. He kept telling me, oh, Doge is going up, Doge is going up. I kept hearing about it in the news. Elon Musk was getting on SNL, talking about the Doge. And so eventually I gave in. I decided I was going to start learning about cryptocurrency. And the more I read the Reddit on Doge, I kind of liked it. It was like do only good every day. And that aspect of it kind of resonated with me. I then got on Twitter and got into the Doge Twitter and it was a little creepy and weird. And so I kind of soon cooled off on Doge, but I had this Robinhood account. That's where I was starting to trade on Bitcoin, Ethereum, and Doge. I'd gotten Litecoin and some of the other smaller ones, but pretty much sold off of that and just stayed to the big three for me were Bitcoin, Ethereum, and Doge. And that's where I keep my uh, Robinhood money. I don't add to it anymore. I kind of capped myself out at around, I think it was $10,000, but it was essentially a place where I could buy cryptocurrency, kind of like a stock market. So I knew I couldn't withdraw it, okay? Having a wallet wasn't important to me when I first started. I wanted a place that I could get my tax forms from. And so that's why I started Robinhood. I didn't really use it as an individual brokerage account like other people do. So to buy stocks, to do options trading, to do aftermarket or before market, I didn't use any of those functions. I know there are other applications like Webull that probably do the same thing. And that's some of the knocks that people have on public over Robinhood or some of these other individual brokerage accounts. But for me personally, the way I use Robinhood is just simply for cryptocurrency and cryptocurrency alone, except for a small exception, the pre-IPO. The minute the pre-IPO started happening and I started to see Figs was the first one that I saw listed, that's where I started to realize, you know what, maybe I can use this Robinhood for in individual stock investments. So for me personally, whenever I try to do IPOs after the fact, I always get burnt. So I don't really like to invest in IPOs. I still do it every now and again with small amounts just for fun. But by and large, I don't think IPOs are a great investment unless you're strictly trying to do short term and you're just trying to capitalize on swing trades. And that might be better just done from a Roth account, in my personal opinion, to minimize the capital gains. But if you're wanting to do swing trading, IPOs could be a possibility for you. Problem is, I just did it with Warby Parker and it just got nailed. And so honestly, I don't really like IPOs. It's more for fun for me. But for Robinhood, having access to the pre-IPO is actually very, I think, intriguing to me. I'd never invested in a pre-IPO before. I think there are other things like Equity Zen where you can just go ahead and kind of get access to this a little bit more readily. But for me, I was doing Robinhood. I tried Figs. I tried Duolingo. Both I did not hit on. Finally, when Robinhood had its IPO, I actually hit on them. And so I'd put, I think, like $500 into it. I ended up making a 50% return. Granted, you all remember its first day where it went minus 8 9%. And I figured, you know what? I just invested money that I was okay with losing. So I just wrote it out, it popped off to about 50% and I went and sold it and that was well within the 30 day rule. And so Robinhood ended up kind of putting me in timeout, I think it was for 60 days so that I no longer could purchase pre-IPO shares through them. And that's actually kind of what led me to my next account. My next account was SoFi. The SoFi was essentially something that was referred to me. I ended up signing up, putting in $1,000 so the person that referred it could get their bonus. I think I got $50 for it. And I started investing on there to just go ahead, check it out, have another account that I could get access to pre-IPO. And realistically, the only reason I use SoFi now is just to hold the cryptocurrency that I ended up buying there. Initially, I had done a little bit of Moderna that I bought a full share in when it was kind of trading at volatility. But when the crypto market had that big 20% drop, I ended up just liquidating that and dumped everything into half and half Bitcoin and Ethereum. And it's doing well. I think I'm up 25% on that account just because of cryptocurrency. Uh, but when I kept trying to look for the pre-IPO, I'm not sure if I'm doing it wrong, but I can't find anything on there for pre-IPO. Maybe they just haven't had something that they're bringing to pre-IPO and that's why I don't have access to it. But I'm pretty sure I signed up for the waitlist or whatever kind of button I needed to click 
But if you guys have any more information on that, please drop me a comment, tell me how to use it because pre-IPO is something I'm more than happy to invest in. It's just the post-IPO when they launch it and then that run up on the price goes huge, it becomes very difficult to buy it at a price that's actually worthwhile for holding in the long term. And it also becomes something where you get nervous. So if it has a big run up, it's likely due to hedge funds or institutional money kind of buying it up, trying to day trade. They are moving that price up and then they leave you holding the bag. And so that's why I kind of shy away from IPOs. But that's so far for me. It's not really much that I do. I used to just try to log in to get the points so that I could have that daily login streak and get those extra points and then just invest that in cryptocurrency. But I've gotten lazy and so I stopped using it for the most part. And the third and final account that I want to talk to you about is Public. I think I started somewhere in between SoFi and Robinhood, but Public for me has been probably my favorite individual brokerage account to invest with. And it's not even for the tangible things like pre-market or aftermarket or options trading because you can't do those on Public. Uh, it's not for the fact that it has great research or analytics because Fidelity hands down is better. Also, Fidelity has IRA accounts, which Public doesn't have. But what draws me to public and gets me to talk about it a lot more is just simply the community aspect. For me, my public account, honestly, is just a hodgepodge. So you have my ETFs, my long-term investments there, but then I'm literally just buying random things in small quantities to watch. For me, this is where I do my kind of new research. It's more exploratory. So from buying Manchester United randomly, because I saw it on the search page, to buying smaller stocks that I'd never heard of, like Astra, uh, Matterport, Origin Materials, these are ones that I never would have come across in Fidelity. And so that was kind of the nice aspect of having public. Even if you are a, an investor that's been doing this for a while, being on public can be helpful just to open your eyes to other new opportunities, new ventures that you might not kind of been exposed to if you stayed kind of in your lane or in your comfort zone. So for me personally, is my account on public doing extremely well? No, I'm going into like small cap stocks, more volatile. Right now after September, I got nailed and I went from being plus 5% to I think minus 5% after September. And so public for me isn't one where I'm just generally getting steady returns, but it's also probably smaller amount of my kind of overall investing. It generally is within that 10% of my money that is within kind of swing trading, speculative trading, uh, just more fun stuff. And so for me, I'm using this to kind of learn from other retail investors. I'm using it to learn about new sectors such as um, e-betting or e-sports, other things like space. And so these are just very interesting sectors that I think are going to have futures in the market later on, like marijuana. But that's just my guess on kind of what the future of some new sectors are going to look like in five to 10 years. And so for me, public probably isn't going to be my best investment account in terms of the amount of money that I make on it. But the community that I get to build, the interactions I get with new investors is what makes it just a wonderful account for me. And so for anyone that's new to investing, don't sleep on the fact that community matters. Being able to talk to other people, bounce off ideas, learn new things. That's what makes public so much more valuable than your Robin Hood, your Weeble. It's a way of learning. It's a way of kind of growing as an investor to push yourself and to also not get discouraged when you have red days and bad days. So that's why I like public. If you look in the comments below, there actually only is one referral link to one of those three. It's for public. Don't use mine, use Brendan Chima's. He's a college kid. He would enjoy that free slice far more than I would. But join us on public. That's where I'm pretty much most active, but I've learned a lot from you guys there, and so I always want to give you a shout out and a thank you. You guys have taught me a lot because of the connections I've made there. I've started Canva, so that's really helped me with Instagram, with Twitter, even a little bit with TikTok. You guys have pushed me and motivated me to be more active and get in front of a camera, create this series here. So I just wanted to say a special thank you to you guys and girls for all supporting me. And so thanks. Also leave comments with what you want to hear about next. I'm gonna be unrolling a new kind of series probably for next month, but I'm still trying to hash it out in my mind, figure out what I wanna do, how to tie it all together, but stay tuned. Thanks for listening.